So of course, you know, uh, this is an open mic, and uh, people are coming up doing five to ten minutes of comedy, and I want you guys in the audience here to be you know, polite and respectful. Uh, if you think something's funny, please laugh. Uh, if you don't, just be silent, so they know it's not funny, and I'll say that in front of people ever again. Just wait, how you learn? Yeah. Uh, you know, of course, if you have to take a phone call, please go outside. Uh, you know, don't sit here and text during the show. So it lights up your, your face, and then you look like a ghost. Uh, and I decided, to do, I decided to tell jokes to ghosts. Okay, I'm not, my name is not Peter Venkman, I'm not here for that. <laughs> not what I'm about. Excellent, excellent. It's nice to be here last night. Last night, uh, I was about to leave the house, and uh, so I, checked, I checked my Facebook, and my friend had a status, and she said, let's all have a drama-free evening. So that's great, I was gonna go see a play. <laughs> you ruined that. It's like a good night, you go find that girl, just mess with her, like go and grab her ass. She goes to slap you, like, hey, no drama. <laughs> nice. I had another friend of mine, she, uh, she went to the eye doctor recently, and the eye doctor told her that she had fat eyeballs. <laughs> she had fat eyeballs. That's a, that's a real self esteem thing. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to wear contacts. We don't, we're gonna have to wear glasses, we're gonna have contacts for you. Uh, we're gonna have contacts in double XL. Sorry. <laughs> and then he told her, he's like, you have stretch marks on your eyes. That's not, that's not polite. That's not, that's messed up, because usually the one nice thing you can say about any woman is, you know, wow, you have really pretty eyes. No, not this girl. I'm sorry, your eyeballs are off the topic. <laughs> sorry. How do you just paint your eyes? Do you have, like, little dumbbells in your eyelashes just blink a lot? Don't <laughs> burn! She gets really sad every time a song hungry eyes comes on the radio. <laughs> I like this. I like coming up, you know, just driving here to a show. I, I really enjoy uh, stand-up. I, I love stand-up so much, I have dreams about it. Uh, I had a dream the other night, the devil was doing stand-up. And of course, he was doing terrible because he's the devil, you just can't relate to him. You know, he's, he's there, he's like, You guys know when you're sitting down in hell, there's like a lake of fire, and you're sitting here throwing that crystallized baby tears, you think I'm in control of the evil in the world. And then you look down, you realize, there's bits of torn your flesh in your hopes. I mean, what's that about? Am I right? You know? <laughs> right? <laughs> and then you try to get one of your health servers to get the flesh to take it out. You get some flesh stuck in there. I mean, yeah, Keith Reeves was making the worst health servers, you know? <laughs> I'm the devil, relate to me. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys relate to me a little better than that. See, I get to travel around a little bit. It's fun. I was in, uh, I was in Florida recently. Uh, I was having breakfast at a diner. And uh, the woman was real, real nice waitress telling us about the specials. She's like, oh, yeah, we got this skillet. It's real good. It's been all bowl with a bunch of potatoes. And, Bacon and gravy and eggs on there. It's real good. She puts her hair on my shoulder. She's like, It's real good for a big fella like you. <laughs> I'm going to say something real mean. I'm going to say a southern accent. So it sounds nice. <laughs> and I'm going to whisper it. So, first of all, I'm saying. But then when it gets in your brain, you just walk around a big fella like you. A big fella like you. <laughs> some bitch like you needs to fill the stands hole with a bunch of food, you big fat bastard. Can I freshen out the drink? Okay, hey. <laughs> she was a bitch, I hate her. Don't know. What else do I tell you guys? I was, at, I was actually out, uh, I was up in Nary the other day, because I'm white, obviously. Uh, and I remember this girl telling her friend, and then she graduates school, she wants to get a job. She's just like, I always want to get a job doing something fun. Just doing something fun. I was like, where do you search for that in the classifieds? Where's the something fun jobs? What, what do you consider something, something fun is like being a big unicorn brewer? You just go and like, yeah, I just got this job, it's something fun. You know, I, I grew this unicorn. I go and I, I brush all the magic out of his hair, and you know, when it runs out of magic, I just refill it, you know? Make sure his horn is shiny. It's a something fun job. It's something to do. Something to do. Kids are stupid. That's what I'm getting at. Young people. Young people have this phrase now that I found out about. It's called uh, YOLO. It's an acronym. It's Y-O-L-O. -O. You only live once. And they'll say that. Like, whenever we do something like, skip your class, go to the beach. YOLO. But it's always something like that. It's never like something really positive. It's never like, you know, wrote the great American novel. YOLO. <laughs> Cure cancer. YOLO. So that's something self-serving and useless, like forgot to use a condom and didn't pull out, YOLO. <laughs> Beat up a dude there call him a faggot, YOLO. Terrible. <laughs> kids are awful. I don't have any kids, my own. I, uh, I'm at an age where it's appropriate, like, you know, 30. Looks like if, I, if you see me hanging with a five-year-old, first thought his father, not a pedophile, uh, which, you know, that might be your mistake, who knows. I did have a girlfriend one time, I thought she was pregnant. 
uh, one time every single month. I guess Frank phone call at like seven in the morning. Like, CB, oh my god, my period hasn't come yet. My period hasn't come yet. My period hasn't come yet. I'd be there in the line, like all groggy, like, you know, come around like 11 o'clock and I want to get up. <laughs> it's a big girl's time right now. This is big girl's time. What do you do about a big girl's time right now? I don't know. Leave town, change my name. Do anything on a racist matter of marriage, you crazy person. You're awful. The worst. She was bad. She's the reason that I like, uh, I do like reality television now. Uh, because his girlfriend, she actually appeared on the final season of Hell's Kitchen, the, the TV cooking show. If you don't know the show, it was a show with uh, Gordon Ramsay, the British guy, which go around yelling at everyone. He was like, oh, you're awful, you're rubbish, that's it, make it again! That show, okay? So they go to the show, and you know, the reality show, they all have someone there who's just an asshole. Just someone they're not really qualified, like she couldn't make, for, uh, she couldn't make real cheese, like she was not qualified to do a cooking show. But she was just an asshole, so they had her on there. And like, the first thing she said, they put on national television, the first thing she said, okay, I am. I'm fucking up his jokes I haven't done like seven months. Uh, that's how I'm like, fuck it. So, okay. First thing I noticed when she got on TV is that she had gained about 200 pounds. So she's rocking about 350. Like, she's, she's looking pretty big. But, of course, she's still the stupid small bitch in her head. So the first thing she says to the national audience of the world is, and everyone's like to me, hey, here's my pretty chef that wants to be a model. You're pretty, fuck. I'm just gonna bail out a fucking joke. God damn it, you guys. I had a brain fart, whatever. Uh, so on Twitter, we'll do a, that's, that's a smooth transition, right, Travis? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Twitter. Um, anybody else on Twitter? Woo! Most people. Excellent. I like Twitter. Twitter is one of those things I, uh, I realize I have a problem with it, because I was, I was tweeting on the toilet the other day, uh, and what I was tweeting was literally just, I'm on the toilet tweeting, because I thought that was funny to me. I was like, I think this is what Henry, this is what Henry David Thoreau was worried about. You know, that like the, the first news to come through the broad flapping American ear would be the Princess Anne Lance, the woman cough. Well, I'm taking a Tuesday. <laughs> Alright, we found there's the smart people. Excellent. I like to do that joke to find the smart people. I like Twitter. Twitter, my favorite people to follow on Twitter that I found are uh, porn stars. Uh, because it's just because you get this really wonderful mix of really, really girly stuff and then the awful realities of selling your body for money. You'll hear like, a bunch of people be like, going to get my nails done. Smiley face. Next week we'll be like, still worn out from that 12 man gangbang. Brown and furs. <laughs> Love other girls in the normal movie. Add Big Jim 14, your giant girl's got green range my insides. JK, love ya. They're wars. You guys know, dude, they get some, sometimes the, on the Twitter the porn stars get upset because somebody will call them a whore. They say, I'm not a whore, I'm an actress. So I'm not you're a whore. You get paid to have sex. You're a whore. Having someone report it doesn't make you a whore, it just makes you a whore on a permanent record. That's what it is. <laughs> I think the problem with that is what happens, it goes to their head because when someone's in porn, they automatically become a porn star. You're a star. It's like you're, you're at one point, you're a star. Like, I had a buddy of mine, he was in Transformers 3 for four seconds. He's not a star. He's not the same as like Will Smith or uh, Denzel Washington. You know, he's just a guy. And so I was wondering, where, who are like the character actors of porn? Who's the William H. Macy of porn? Who's the Steve Buscemi of porn? Who's the Laura Lenny of porn? The joke is ending. That's what happens. You think I find it open mic? I have to be out of time now. I should end on a funny joke, shouldn't I? No? It's good because I don't have any funny jokes. I'm just going to keep rolling. Because my next, my next person on the stage is my good buddy. He came up here with me from Virginia Beach, and he's going to make you guys laugh. I want you guys to please give a big round of applause for my buddy, Brant Schreiber. Keep it going. Woo. I look like I'm from here, just to be honest, right? The white guy version. Definitely not a black guy from here, right? No. White. <laughs> How's everyone doing tonight? You good? You good? I am your first for not the host guys. And uh, I brought a notebook up because uh, my brain hurts today. Anyone use ADD as an excuse for why they don't remember things? 
Are you clinically diagnosed, though? A little bit, a little bit. A little bit. I don't know if that's a diagnosis. I, I miss half the meeting. What? No. Oh. <laughs> I think I want ADD on you right there. I blame it. I blame things on ADD, like, uh, but I have a reason, because it's true. Like, I voted for Obama ADD. Actually, I voted for Obama just because I didn't want Sarah Palin to be closer to the presidency. I'm a homeowner. Does it look like it? Well, you believe me. It's awesome. I've learned something, though. If I have a ghost in my house, I'm just going to become friends with that ghost because I've seen Poltergeist. And I know why they say until the end of the movie, all that fucking paperwork that you have to sign. Just charge the ghost rent. Probably pays more rent than my actual roommates. <laughs> Problem with having a house is I have to mow the lawn, and I'm an asthmatic, so I don't mow the lawn. So now I have a safari in my backyard until they gave me the notice that I needed to mow my lawn. So I bought some machetes. I still didn't mow the lawn, though, I promise you. But I did find it funny that, uh, looking back on it, my parents never let me mow the lawn because I have asthma, but they smoked in the house where I lived. Does that make sense? Like, they were caring about my well-being in public, but in private, let's just smoke around the kid, make him breathe better. <laughs> Maybe he'll start smoking. Next joke. <laughs> I killed a mouse in my house. I'm making rhymes. I don't like to kill things because I think everything and everything does have a living soul. Like if Travis, you were a roach, you have roach friends, right? Would you like to get stepped on? No. There you go. So I have to think about it. Like you step on a bug, I think, holy shit, I just ended something's life. Obviously I can't be a murderer. Probably look like one. None of you would be scared of me in a back alley, I just know that. Perfect. Maybe you. No, not even you. I tried to become a cop, even. Just look at the, this is what Virginia Beach is bringing up to their cop, like to the police academy. Got to the final interview. Then they saw what I looked like. I gotta stop doing those online police applications. But if I shot a gun, I'd fly through this wall. Kick back. And if I pulled someone, if I had to tell someone to stop, I'd be like, stop! Or I'll have to ask you again. Please, stop. Then they just knock me over and run away. <coughs> Pull someone over, they tell me that they have a, they're running, they're taking their wife to the hospital because she's pregnant. And I believe them and they didn't even have a woman in the car. Let me escort you. <laughs> I don't want to deal with this. Never meet my quota. I've had a colonoscopy done. Is that weird? Do I look like I should have a colonoscopy? I blame my parents for that one, too. They were filming Inner Space, is what they were doing. <laughs> Part two. People have seen Martin Short movies, is what two people have said right now. Nice jokes. I really had no plan whatsoever to do this. You ever heard the term, wrong way to eat a Reese's? There are plenty of wrong ways. There are wrong ways. <laughs> And a Klondike bar commercial is a wrong way to eat a Reese's. <laughs> or uh, off of a five-year-old's penis. It's a very wrong way to eat a Reese's. I've never done that, because it's wrong. <laughs> off of a dead hooker, unless she was okay with it while she was alive. <laughs> and you didn't kill her. <laughs> Any short people in the room? <coughs> I can joke short people because I have a short roommate and he fits all the stereotypes. And when I say stereotypes, he drives a big truck. And he has an open holstered gun that he walks around with. That's compensating, right? No? What I'm trying to say is anything you can reach, I can reach better. I can reach anything higher than you. You can have the floor, though. That hurts my back. Scratch my knee while you're down there. You may be able to shoot a sparrow with a bow and arrow, but well, fuck that, I'll just grab it out of the sky. And 
I, yeah, traveling up here from Virginia Beach, it's not that long of a drive, but I like to travel. Anyone like to travel in here besides myself and my Virginia Beach friend here? It's fun, right? You ever travel, like, I, I have trouble going on a road trip without marijuana. It's needed. But it gets you thinking, like, I-95 has two identical roads going separate directions. Those roads had to have been there before civilization, right? Because how the fuck do you get those so consecutively to everywhere? Am I the only one who thought about this while I was high? Driving through the mountains, you know who settled in the mountains? Dwarves. Then they grew to taller people. Next jokes. Seriously. These paintings, like last week, I, I only noticed two pairs of titties, but now I see them all over. <laughs> Anyone else see the titties? Now I see an eyeball. Right there. It's $3,000 for the titties. <laughs> it's expensive titties. I hate drunk drivers, too. And that's a problem with going on a road trip, is what do you see on the road all the way up there? Dumb drivers. And no, no offense, some of you might be the dumb drivers. But if you're driving in a lane that you know ends, why the fuck do you ride it till the end? Because you're a dumb driver. Why do you turn on your left turn signal to move right? Because you're a dumb driver. But you've seen it happen, right? Turn on a left signal, go left, leave it on, and then you go back right, but you didn't notice your left signal was on? So you were smart for part of it. What you need to do is have a garage, warm up your car, and forget to open the garage. Problem solved, you're dead. That's how dumb those drivers should be. And seriously, I get road rage, and no one should be scared of me when I have road rage. Like 80 pounds. But you add 1,800 pounds, I'm still not scary with the car. So I'll never act on my anger. But I could blow up what I'm saying. <coughs> Lost my virginity once, and uh, I planned it out. Lost it to a pregnant girl, so it was technically a threesome. Technically. Poked the baby in the head, I guess. Ten seconds in, yeah, I got, oh, whatever that noise was. Ten seconds in, I screamed out, I choose you, Pikachu. And I had planned that shit out for like three years. And she said, use quick attack, so in 12 seconds, I was done. <laughs> At least she got her squirtle, take this jiggly buff and go to sleep. It's a bright light. I actually uh, don't know what else I have here to talk about. You like porn? Everyone likes porn. I just couldn't ever get past the are you over 18 screen until I was over 18 because I couldn't lie. I fucked myself over there too. You guys have been uh, awesome, by the way. I'm done. Have a great evening. I'm Brett Schreiber. doesn't understand how roads are made. <laughs> We're going to have a long talk on the ride home about how <laughs> survey crews and asphalt's lame. And it's not just magic that existed in the time of dinosaurs. Don't we even think like we're grabbing down dinosaur treads and they just left? I'm thinking they were just dirt roads and then we finally made them. You're a dumb motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> You're the asshole learning because you laughed at that. I said something worthy of being a good friend of mine and you laughed. You're a dick. Alright, but we're going to talk about virginity. I will say, uh, did you guys ever notice that nobody goes to their virginity doggy style? It just never happens. Dogs. Dogs. Dogs and gay people, I was told. <laughs> our, our good friend, uh, Jerry Barnes, is a comic, he's a gay dude, he's, he's a gay guy, he totally does it that way. So I figure you're either uh, a gay dude or a whore if you lose a doggy style. <laughs> and for my she doesn't lose a doggy style, but she told me she lost her virginity 
uh, up against a wall in the rain. It's fucking epic. That's like from a John Hughes movie. That's awesome. Also missing is like Spider-Man upside down touching himself. <laughs> you guys ready for your next comic? Yeah. All right. Uh, she's a lady whose name I was mispronouncing. I was way more excited about it, but I'm, I'm sure she's going to be very funny and make me feel like an asshole for saying it. So, ladies and gentlemen, give her applause for Santa De Haven. I am up here um, early. It, it did turn dark. Um, most of the people who would think I'm funny are in bed by this time. They don't. They don't drive at night. They have bad vision. You know, it's it's a fact that God planned that your vision would turn really bad once your skin started to lose elasticity. It explains sex after 65. Nobody hears it over 65, I guess. I watched The Help last night. I didn't get it. What was that all about? Was that like Sweet Valley High, the civil rights years? I didn't get it. <laughs> and then at the, all of the white girls, they're totally mean. It's just mean girls. The civil rights, I think it was a little bit more than just mean girls. And at the end, you have one of the black maids is in jail, and one of them loses her job, and a really bad white girl has a really big cold sore. That's the end of the movie. I guess none of you saw that. If any of you had seen this movie, you might have felt this way about this movie. I did watch it last night, and I did feel that way. I'm from New Jersey. If nobody calls 911, whatever's going on, you're good to go. You don't hang around, you don't wait around for the police. I grew up in Jersey City. It's a lot like Petersburg, but without all the culture. And everybody says, forget about it. Now I live in the suburbs. There is absolutely no reason on earth to live in the suburbs. The only reason to live in the suburbs, possibly, is parking. Nobody knows how to parallel park anymore. And believe me, parallel parking is a cause of many, many divorces in America. Nobody knows how to park. I'm the kind of person, somebody's parking the car, and I'm in the passenger seat, and I'm like watching them park the car, and I'm saying, really, this is taking like 10 minutes. And they're moving the wheel, and they're backing up, and the car is kind of like not moving. And they're doing like six motions, and the car has probably moved a half inch closer to the curb in the last 15 minutes. And I'm sitting there and, you know, trying to like not lose my mind and saying, Prozac, start working now. Prozac, start working now. It usually does. I get out of the car and I say, great parking job. I lie a lot. I've been married a long time. When you're married, you lie a lot. My daughter got married. I didn't know what to get her for um, the wedding gift, but I said, you know, I've been married a long time. I know what you need when you're married. So I got her a uh, membership to Costco because what you need when you're married is a whole lot of toilet tissue. I know, I'm married over 40 years. I've never run out of toilet tissue in 40 years, and I'm still married. What else could explain it? Oh, maybe the vodka. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think I had something else that I was going to talk about, about like when you know your relationship is over when you're, when you're married, when you have bug phobia, and your husband no longer kills bugs for you, that you cannot like scream in the bathroom like, oh my god, oh my god, and they don't come, and you realize that it's all over once you have to kill the roaches yourself. It's really one of those kind of like life-changing um, moments. Um, I don't know if I had anything else to talk about tonight. Um, toilet paper, vodka. Uh, my marriage is really going on the rocks, though, and I really can blame comedy for it in a lot of ways. 
I signed the pact before I got married, and uh, my husband said, if you become religious, I will leave you. And I said, don't worry, I'm not going to become religious. What he never made me sign a pact about was becoming a comedian. I think it's really ruining my marriage. He comes home at night and I'm watching South Park. There's no way I can explain it. And uh, hopefully by next week I'll have some more uh, marriage jokes for you and maybe there'll be some people who uh, will understand them. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here today. Because they were that sank or Santa. Santa the album. That was Santa. Look at Rama. Yay! <laughs> <laughs>